Hi everyone, Asini here, trying something different. I'm actually not in a car today. Um, but I wanted to chat for a little bit. Uh, this topic, I don't even know where to begin. I think it's a big, it's a broad topic and there's a lot of layers. So I'm probably going to revisit it again some other time. Uh, like you might see my babies, my little kitties. I don't know if they're gonna walk around or not. So, and I'm standing, I'm trying to figure this all out. What feels comfortable to me? Sitting doesn't feel comfortable right now. So I'm trying to figure out like my groove for this. But anyway, enough about that. Um, so I'm oftentimes considered a germaphobe. I don't ever like really any labels, but I, allow for that one because I think it makes it easier on others to kind of interpret where I'm coming from. I'm not, a, I wouldn't consider myself to be that. I think that there's a way to kind of keep our space and be mindful of each other and be hygienic. <laughs> I'm trying to know there's a long pause. So I, cause I'm trying to think of like a better way to say it. Just, you know, um, like, you know, normal stuff, washing your hands, being mindful of your space, thinking about someone other than yourself. Granted, I'm bringing this up because at the same time, I always consider the idea of interconnectedness, of freedom, of power, of confidence, and you might be thinking, well, what the hell is she talking about? She just started talking about germs, germ being a germaphobe, hygiene, freedom, power, interconnectedness. I mean it like this. I think everything has a connection. And it's really, really imperative that we treat each other well because the same way when we treat each other well, that travels. It connects to one, and you share it to the next, and you share it to the next, and you share it to the next. So when you don't, same thing happens. Share it with the next, the next, the next, the next. How does this connect to cleanliness? Okay. When, and I think it's, I completely think it's on a subconscious level. I don't think people go around and they're like, how could it be gross? Ew. Um, or at least I hope not. Um, and this, I know it's going to sound, it can sound bizarre, but bear with me. And like I always say, the parts that resonate rock with it and the parts where you're like, what the fuck? Let it go. Um, so back to the germs, freedom, connectedness, everything. Okay, so I was always raised, you wash your hands, you clean your hands, you, um, you cover your mouth when you cough, when you yawn, when you sneeze. Um, you care about how you enter a space and how you use that space because you consider others. Are you consider that others are going to be in that space as well. So, also, in addition to that, I was instilled with a good amount of confidence and self-esteem and and I guess for lack of a better word power self-power believing in myself believing that I am okay as I am when you feel like you're okay as you are at least I believe you don't often choose to impose yourself in spaces or try to take any opportunity for what you may deem as a power move, no matter how bizarre or small it is, even if it's a sneeze. So for example, when you walk into a space, and granted sometimes you can't catch every sneeze, you can't catch every yawn, you can't catch every cough. I'm fully aware of that. This is when you can. So you walk into a space and it's a communal space and we're all let's say there's food there, everything, and we're all using our hands and we're picking up food and we're using the tongs. And someone comes up 
and they pick up the food with their bare hand or they stick their hand in the pile of the food. And they probably just got off the subway, got the bus, whatever, without any consideration that there are other people around to use that space. This is what I think about. What has happened for that person to choose that? Now, granted, it's almost like they're not thinking, they're moving around. Yeah, that happens. I believe that too. At the same time, when you're seeing it happen on a broader scale, when you're seeing a lot of people doing that, what are we saying energetically, subconsciously, when we interact in that way? We're saying, I need you to see me, even if I don't ever get to see you see me, but I need to be seen, I need to be made, I need to impose myself into this space. And today, the kind of action I'm going to choose to do that will be me sticking my hand in and taking the food, even though I know my hand is dirty because I've kind of conquered that space. It's kind of like an energetic conquering. Now, if you don't feel like you need to, and I granted, I know I'm getting into bizarre town, but bear with me. If you don't think that you need to utilize that space or that you need to be seen or someone's going to take from you, You'll say, hey, let me pick this up. But, you know, I know some people need it too. Let me use the tongs. I'm probably not explaining this the best way. So I may have to come back to this again. But, and this happens a lot of times with our, our younger people and in environments that maybe seem rigid to them, like corporate or whatever. It's important to think, how can we make people feel okay as themselves so that they don't grab for any kind of sense of any kind of movement to make them feel like they have to regain power. Power is a tough word. And I'm trying to really think of another way to say it. Um, because if you feel fine in yourself, you're not necessarily always seeking power. But when you're made to constantly feel small, you'll do really odd and weird things. Things that don't, things as small as sneezing in, in a small space or not washing your hands to touch food or smearing something when you know you could just wipe it off. Because you're utilizing the smallest amount of what you deem to be power to be seen. What can we do to ensure that people feel that they are seen, that they are cared for, and that they matter, so that these are not the ways in which they feel they have to act out? That's something I'm thinking about for a while. I don't have the answers yet. I don't even really think, I hope you guys will bear with me with this one, because I'm not even sure I'm expressing this in quite the way that I would like to. It's, it's like a micro power move. And if it's micro, how many do you think you have to do to even get some semblance of feeling like some? A lot. So I know for me, sometimes when I see that shit, I get so fucking mad. Like I cannot stand that because I just think it doesn't take anything to say, hey, let me wash my hands for a second. Hey, let me cover my mouth. And let me talk some shit about this elbow move too. I'm gonna keep it 100 with y'all. If you don't have it locked in, like fully locked in, then the sneeze is up here and the sneeze is up here and the sneeze is everywhere. Hey, my husband's coming home. So sometimes I kind of think you should designate a hand and that's your hand, and you anti-back it, you rock it out. Like, I run through anti-back at my job because we use so many papers, and I'm not gonna give you anything, and I don't wanna get anything, but maybe like designate, designate that hand, designate that hand handkerchief, and that's the one you always keep clean, you always wash it, you always, I mean, you should always be washing hands, but you know, that's the hand, you don't high-five anyone, you don't take the pole on the subway, all that stuff. I think it's just important to think about those things. So I'm fully aware those things that those things piss me off. But with broader thinking, why are we doing this? 
and how can we help people to feel more planted, more grounded, more seen, more cared for, so that maybe we can all have a more positive environment together. So I'm going to sit and ponder on that. My food's boiling. And that's it for today. Um, so I'll chat with you guys soon. Hope all is good.